Hi, I'm Erin Power. And I'm Laura Rupsis. We're certified health coaches, and this is Health Coach Radio. This podcast is about the art, science, and business of health coaching. We share our insider tips to help you become a better coach and entrepreneur. And we interview expert guests to discover how they've made it in this growing field. It's time for health coaches to make an impact. It's time for Health Coach Radio. Our guest today is Amy Lipman, who is the founder of Marketing for Health Coaches. Amy has spent the last 11 years giving health coaches the materials they need to get clients and grow their businesses. Personally, I love chatting with business coaches for health coaches. It helps us answer the question, how do I put myself out there and find clients? Easily the number one question coaches ask us. Amy has great advice and some excellent resources to offer up, so you'll get a lot out of this episode. Our show's sponsor is Primal Health Coach Institute. We're a health coaching school that provides aspiring and existing health and fitness professionals with the training, resources, and support to make a lucrative living changing lives. We've got thousands of graduates practicing unique coaching specialties and changing lives in countries all over the world. Visit PrimalHealthCoach.com to learn about all of our coaching and specialty certification courses, including the Primal Health Coach Certification Course, the Primal Fitness Coach Certification Course, and our Master Coach Certification Course, which satisfies the educational requirements to sit for the Health Coaching National Board Exam. Also keep checking back as we launch several new specialty programs, including our Launch Your Coaching Business course, which will nurture you to create and sell your signature health coaching program. And we have even more courses coming down the pike soon. So if you're interested in functional therapeutic diets, the human intestinal microbiome, strength training for women, or learning how to be a health coach in a medical practice, keep checking back to our website and sign up to our email list to be the first to find out when these outstanding new courses drop. Visit primalhealthcoach.com and check it out. And while you're perusing our website, you can also learn about our done-for-you 12-week coaching program delivered to your clients via a smartphone app. Learn more about Primal Pro at primalhealthcoach.com forward slash Primal Pro. As you're listening to today's show, make sure to screen grab your podcast player and tag us in your Instagram stories at healthcoachradio and... As always, the show notes for this episode and all previous episodes of our pod can be found at primalhealthcoach.com forward slash radio. With all of that out of the way, let's get on with today's important and actionable conversation with our guest, Amy Lippman. Hello, Amy Lippman. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you. Um, you specialize in marketing for health coaches. So a very, I guess, poignant and like strikes to the heart of what I guess makes health coaches nervous for the most part is right in this realm. So I would love for you to kind of start us off this conversation a little bit about who you are and what it was that led you in this direction in yeah. marketing for health coaches specifically. Yeah, absolutely. So I was a health coach myself for five years. Um, I started in 2006. I started my practice. So it's been quite a while. And it's interesting because I was drawn to health coaching. I had a health coach myself. That was kind of how I got introduced to this world. I had a health coach, had no thoughts of becoming one. It was just like a friend had worked with a health coach and she saw amazing results. And I was like, this sounds really cool. I want to check this out. So I found myself a health coach and I was really drawn to learning more and more about health and wellness and just really loved bettering myself in that way. And then I also was drawn to having my own business, it turned out. Like I didn't go in with that goal, but I saw what she had built, this particular health coach. And it wasn't immediate, but I think like many of us, I had, you know, a moment, a week, a month maybe in my current job, my current, I had a full-time job at the time, where it's feeling kind of bleh you know, that languishing <laughs> feeling. I was kind of bored. I'd been in the job for 
maybe four years. So I, and I didn't really want to move into another role at that organization. And it was a great job, but I just, I was bored. I wanted something new and different. And the entrepreneurial part of being a health coach really appealed to me. So I was like, all right, I'm going to jump in and do this much to my husband's dismay. I was a pretty quick decision maker. <laughs> I was like, I got to do this. I'm doing it. And um, and so I practiced health coaching for five years. And I would hear people say, and this is just for me, right? I know a lot of the listeners, right? You all are just, this is your calling. This is your passion. This is what you're meant to do. And I would hear colleagues of mine say, oh, I found my calling. And I was like, oh, I don't. I don't quite feel that way, like, but I feel I enjoy this and I, you know, so I'm going to keep going down this road. And then at a certain point, I realized that I really love the marketing side. Mm -hmm. And that was what I was geeking out about more than that. I loved coaching. I was an okay coach. I was a fine coach, you know, but it really wasn't what I wanted to be spending health coaching wasn't really what I wanted to be spending my time on. And, you know, coaches often have a lot of questions and, and want support and need support around their marketing. And so I started reaching out to some health coaches that I knew, and then they turned me on to other health coaches where I was like, would you like some support with your marketing? And like right off the bat, I got like three clients who were like, yes, please sign me up. And it's kind of evolved from there. I, my business has had different iterations um, going from working largely one-on-one -on -one, um, and to um, my work now, which is more groups and programs that I offer. But that's kind of how it all got started. Oh my gosh. Well, thank goodness for, for you <laughs> and <laughs> folks like you. Um, it's just so interesting how you said that the entrepreneurial part was the part that appealed to you most, because that would be so, I, I would consider that to be very anomalous. Mm -hmm. um, it's the part that most health coaches hate. Um, so like, talk to us about that. I mean, do you think you are, have you always been kind of entrepreneurial? I mean, I know you had a, you had a job job yeah. that you felt like you were unfulfilled in. Um, has there always been an echo of entrepreneurship somewhere in you, or is this something that emerged spontaneously or what's the origin of it? Yeah. I don't really have a background of like any entrepreneurship before becoming a health coach. I think the idea of having freedom of kind of like I put in the work I get I get rewarded directly for that not a, not another organization or company like there's a direct exchange mm -hmm. um, the idea of knowing that I was going to want to start a family and that I would have flexibility and freedom and I could you know earn a living without having to work a nine to five job um, I think that was all very, very appealing to me. Nice. Yeah. Well, the reason why I say thank, thank goodness for people like you is that, you know, you, I, I just have this kind of awareness, like, mm, I like health coaching. I don't think it's my calling. I, I'm really curious as to like, now I'm curious, like, what does a calling feel like? But that's maybe a topic for another day. Right. Um, you know, but I like the marketing side. And so just kind of offering to help some health coaches that you knew, and of course, lo and behold, they were very eager to take you up on it. I think Laura kicked off uh, our conversation before we pressed record that this is the number one question we get asked by in our students, our grads, our listeners. It is the biggest stumbling block. How do I put myself out there? Mm -hmm. um, that question, how do I put myself out there? I can't even count how many times I've been asked that question. So I'd be curious how many times you've been asked that question, but more importantly, how do you answer it? How do I put myself out there, Amy? Yeah. I mean, I think those words and it, it does speak to like the, it feels very like intangible, like this like magical thing that I'm supposed to do, or like also like this huge thing I'm supposed to do, right? Like it's like putting on a, on a play or a musical or something, right? Like <laughs> going on a stage and performing. Um, 
So when we think about, I guess just kind of to back up for a second, one thing I like to, way I'd like to frame this conversation is by talking about how do we consistently get clients? Mm -hmm. Because that's why we want to put ourselves out there, right? Is we want to consistently get clients. So I have this little formula. (laughs) I usually use a visual with it, but I don't think you all can, we can all keep this in our head. It's this pretty simple formula. So let's say you do one thing each week to get in front of new people. Who are the types of people you'd want to work with? One thing each week. Now you're probably going to do more than one, but let's just start with one. And from that one thing, you, during that one thing, in some way, shape, or form, you invite people into an initial consultation with you, which I'm not sure how you all teach that um, at the Institute, but it's a free, typically a free session that you offer to potential clients as a way for you to get to know them, them to get to know you, and see if you're a good match, and then invite them to work with you if they are. Okay, so you're doing this one thing. From that one thing, you're you're getting two consults booked, right? That's pretty doable. Mm-hmm. And you're having those two consults, and from those two consults, you book one client, 50%, right? We can sign on 50% of the people we talk to. And if you do that every week, and you you will sign on roughly four clients a month. And if you're charging between, you know, a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars per client, you're making four to six k ish a month consistently. You know what I love about that entire formula? It's not. SEO optimization. It's not about becoming a TikTok or Instagram um, guru. It's not about having all the cool gadgets. It's all about action and doing something. I when in your initial story, you talked about how you just called up a couple of health coaches that you knew and were like, hey, do you need help? <laughs> That's how I started. You know, people would ask me questions about some food I'd bring to a baseball game or, you know, a Me recipe too. that I had and, and boom, Hey, do you need help? Right. And that's what you need to just get started. You, you need reps under your belt. You need to practice actually coaching people. So you gain some confidence. So now you've got some confidence to have something to say on whatever social media platform you might find interesting, how you might want to frame what goes into your website. What I love about that formula is it's super simple. One thing about getting in front of actual people the more they simulate the type of person you want to work with, the better and just offer to help. Yes. Not yes. Clients. Yes. And we can talk when you're ready. We can talk about, okay, so what are some of the things you can do to get in front of new clients? But I like to frame it this way because it really takes the sort of like mystical, magical, and I, I'm all into mystical, magical, but right? Like it's like, it's really, it's not. It's not this complicated, confusing thing that has to require, you know, a lot of technology or a lot of like, um, I don't know. I think there's this idea that there's some like magical algorithm or hack or, and obviously there are strategies and I teach strategies, right? But um, I think that we get ourselves into trouble when we think that it's so much more complex than it is, because then we actually don't do the things because we're like, well, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? We turn it into this bigger thing that we can't possibly do, or we don't yet know how to do. And there's things all of us, even brand new coaches can do to start getting in front of new potential clients. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's why so many coaches never start to begin with because they think they have to take on this huge overwhelming endeavor when reality, all they got to do is get in front of somebody, talk to them. And, and again, like Aaron and I, we've talked about this stuff on past podcasts before. Like I've picked up clients at, at the soccer field or at a grocery store 
um, just friends of friends that know what I do and, or even just, even before I even really had a business, you know, who knows a lot about that, Laura, because I would talk about it all the time and people that, that referred people. And, and I know Aaron has a similar experience. So, you know, you can, you can sort of baby step your way into a bigger marketing strategy, but the first step to feel authentic, I think is to, I mean, I, this initial just little formula, I think is fabulous. I mean, who can't pick one thing? And it doesn't necessarily have to be that you're orchestrating this big event or that you're trying to weasel your way into someplace you don't belong in order to be in front of these people. You can make it a part of your overall day and things you're doing anyway. I, um, I love it too. And I want us to get into a list of some things, for example, but what I love about it is it, 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 it suggests that you're going to have to do something. <laughs> right. I don't want to, I don't want to sound condescending. I know, I know I just did, but it's like, where are the clients? Like, how come I can't find them? It's like, well, what are you doing? Right. Like, do something, you know? So, so your formula that you gave us is if you do a thing and you get two discovery calls out of it and 50% of those close, then you get a client and then you make the money, but it starts by doing a thing. So you have to do a thing. And I think there is, I don't know, I, I, I get it as a, a, a scooch um, tough lovey about this because no one's going to do it for you. And there is no magic potion or formula or wand that you can wave to get the thing done. The thing just has to be done. Yes. Can I, can I piggyback on what you're saying, Erin? And I know I promise we will get it. <laughs> we all promise the three of us promise we will get into some specifics, but I think marketing, particularly in the health and wellness field, like we're, we are helpers, we are healers, like we want to be of service. That's why we've gotten into this field. And so marketing kind of feels like a dirty word. Mm -hmm. And it also feels like something that's like not in alignment, right? Like it's this like salesy, smarmy, I don't know if that's a word kind of thing that we, that we are told we have to do. So I like to reframe what is marketing. Hmm. Marketing to me is an extension of your health coaching business. Mm -hmm. So if you think about getting in front of new people, those are people you are serving. Whether you're doing it in the grocery store <laughs> or you're giving a talk, or you're doing it on social media, and some of the things that we'll dive into in more detail, these are people you're being of service to. And if we think about like, if our listeners think can think about like, why are you, why did you get into this field? Or why do you want to get into this field? There's some passion or something that's bringing you to this or has brought you to this. And, and so having a having different ways that you can share your message. Laura, I listened to uh, the episode where Aaron interviewed you a few episodes ago, I guess it was quite a few episodes ago. Um, and you were talking about your story and how you got and how you were angry, right? You were like, part of what fueled you is your anger at like, you had been sick, and you had not been helped in the way that you really needed mm -hmm. for a while. Right. And so like, not that you're going to go out there with anger, but anger can kind of fuel us. Right. And not everyone's going to connect with anger. I'm just using this as an example. So for example, we have a client who um, focuses on helping women who have painful periods. She's known as the menstrual miracle worker. <laughs> and she, I will side note and say that when she first came into our Abundant Health Coach program, she was like, I kind of want to talk about periods, but I don't really know if I can do that. I think I'll just do weight loss. Mm. And we coached her and it was a process, but what she ended up going for it, right? Over a little bit of trial and error, really going for it and putting putting her whole self into this specialty of helping women talking about periods. And it was something she, it is something she is so passionate and fired up about that women don't need to suffer. And there are things we can be doing. And 
really talking about it. You know, not every specialty or niche is going to be, I mean, I don't think talking about period, I don't find talking about periods uncomfortable, but I understand why some people do, you know, some, some uh, specialties or niches are going to, are not going to feel as maybe awkward to talk about as periods, <laughs> but I'm using her as an example because like she was, okay. So she's fired up about talking about periods, helping women. So for her to give a talk or for her to get on social media and post or do live streams or whatever, all these things about periods, that is just an extension of her coaching people one-on-one -on -one about their periods. And so if we can think about marketing as a part of us being of service and a way for us to just reach more people with our message. And some of those people are going to want to go more deeply with us and pay us to work together. And some aren't, but I think that that can be really helpful mm -hmm. um, yeah. rather than thinking about marketing as like this God awful thing that I don't want to do, but I have to do because that's never, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's the perfect analogy in a, the health coaching industry is like talking about putting someone on a diet or telling someone they need to go on a diet. It's like you, we all know that like that doesn't last for the long term and muscling through marketing also does not last for the long term. We've got to find a way for it to be like soulful for us and joyful and passionful. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when we will actually sit down and do the things and plan the things and get in front of the people. Yeah. I had um, an experience lately that I think speaks to this a little bit and it helped me really kind of sort of short circuit some of my hangups about marketing. But, um, somebody that I, fo I follow, Dr. Kristen Neff, who's the self-compassion like guru of the world. And I'm just really into self-compassion. I just feel like, cause I do work in the dieting space for the time being that self-compassion is the big missing ingredient there. Anyway, uh, Kristen Neff was offering a, I think it was like a webinar or a workshop. And I, I thought, wow, I have to share this with my audience. I, I have to, this is my responsibility is to share this amazing resource there to say, Hey, I'm just in, popping in your inbox. I'm just popping in your social feeds. Let you know about this really amazing thing that Dr. Kristen Neff is doing. And then I realized I'm also doing extremely important things that I have. I'm responsible for sharing with people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. it's like, it's my responsibility to share what I know with the people who want to hear it. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I shared Kristen Neff stuff and I should feel the same way about feeling my stuff. And it was just like this sort of like, duh, kind of moment. Yes, absolutely. I love yeah. that. I love that. We hear that all the time from people too, who are just naturally relative, like kind of shy and they don't feel comfortable promoting themselves. They don't like talking about themselves. So it's helping to short circuit that and realize, okay, but it's not about you, right? It's about the people you serve. Correct. How are you going to go about communicating with the people you serve rather than talking at them or trying to sell them something you're communicating with the people that you serve and based on what feels natural and authentic to you, how do you do that? So that, that might be a, a nice segue into what you're talking about as far as picking one thing a week, that's going to allow you to get in front of people like that. So you want to dive into some more specifics on what yeah. it looks like? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about some fun ways that you can get in front of your potential clients. And I'll say that over time, you'll probably want to do a combination of strategies and see what jives with you and, and what also results in you getting clients. Um, so let's, so first off, let's talk about giving talks. Giving talks is, in my experience, the top strategy for getting clients. Um, and these can be online talks. These can be local in-person talks. I feel like we are turning a corner with the pandemic where that used to be a huge cornerstone of what I taught health coaches and the pandemic hit. I was like, all right, we got to get get a bit more creative thank goodness the internet exists and this pandemic didn't happen 20 years ago you know mm -hmm. um 
But giving talks is such a phenomenal way to get clients. In fact, it is how I got my first clients as a health coach. I was still in school at the time. And the school that I went to said, we want you to start seeing clients. And I was like, I'm going to be the straight A student. I'm going to do what they tell me, even if it scares me. And I am not a natural public speaker at all. Um, the idea terrified me, but it was like, I'm going to do it. I want this business to be a success. I'm going to just not overthink it. I'm going to just do it. And so my very first talk was at a gym. And um, it was, I can picture it so vividly. It was in the basement. It was in a group fitness room. A group fitness class had just ended. The room was hot and sweaty. <laughs> I was hot and sweaty because I was nervous. <laughs> and I gave a talk to maybe 15 or so people. And I got two clients from that talk. And this was without me having I had literally zero experience as a speaker, okay? So I like to say that because I think there's this idea that in order to actually give talks that result in clients that we have to like be really polished and be like really experienced and confident doing it. And I was none of those things. I mean, I was shaking at the beginning. I don't think anyone could see that. But once I got in the flow, you know, obviously the, the jitters were off. Um, and that is speaking is something that I continue to do to this day. I mean, being on a podcast is a form of speaking, right? Um, doing live streams is a form of speaking, doing stories and reels, not so much reels, I guess, unless you're using the original audio, but these are all forms of, of speaking that we can do. Um, and the thing is that when you give a talk, the people who show up to that talk, are going to be people who are interested in what you do because, I mean, hopefully, you know, your talk is aligned with what you help clients with, right? And so if someone, you know, if you help clients with having more energy and you give a talk on having more energy, the people who show up are going to be a good fit for your program. Mm -hmm. um, and so people are self-selecting in that way. And, and you have the opportunity during that talk, whatever form it takes, to show your expertise, to be seen by your audience as, as an expert. You might not feel like an expert, but trust me, and I'm sure Laura and Aaron probably are hammering this home constantly, <laughs> but even even if you're a new coach and you don't feel like an expert you know so much more than the people in your audience and so we always want to remember that but you're going to start to as a speaker you're going to get seen as an expert and people are going to get a sense of your style and your personality and your energy and build that what we call like the no like and trust mm -hmm. factor mm -hmm. there's a I was going to add, there's a really fun form of speaking that I always like to talk about that I haven't yet mentioned, which is kind of its own strategy, um, but it goes in this category, which is something that I invented when I was a health coach, and my clients absolutely love this. It's called a wellness party, hmm. and it's where you lead an interactive agenda, and it can be done online or locally. And a really popular thing to do at wellness parties is a cooking demo or a cooking class. Now, not all health coaches love cooking. And so I get that question too, or like, do I have to do cooking? Well, no, like if you, maybe you're really into herbs or you're really into essential oils or you're, you're a yoga teacher, or, I mean, there's so many different things you can do, but the cooking piece is very commonly done and it works really well. It takes the pressure off of kind of having a whole talk. Um, and it's really fun for you, the coach, if you like cooking or whatever activity you choose to do. Um, it's something you enjoy doing. So you're going to transmit that that positive energy and enthusiasm to your people. and anything interactive is always going to work really well because it's just more engaging. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so there's a lot of different ways to do wellness parties. So you can host your first one where you're inviting your community and you can even tell people, bring a friend, right? Um, so you're getting in front of people you don't yet know. But what I did and I recommend is that you ask people to host the party for you. So these can be past or current clients, they can be friends, it could be a yoga studio, it could be um, a women's group, I mean, it could be anything, right? And then there, you make it easy for them to promote it by giving them all the materials, um, emails and flyers and things like that, but they're actually doing the work of getting it out to people and getting people there. To the event and that enables you to get in front of new people that's what we want we want you to get in front of new people not just the same you know 20 people week after week after week right? yeah that's a cool idea so do you um these wellness parties that are interactive how much sort of prep and organization goes into that does are you as the coach kind of putting together an agenda some general topics is it relatively fluid based on what the group in front of you is it because <clears throat> there's two sides to this coin, I think, which is folks going into something that's too open and open ended, you can end up being navigating into waters where you don't feel comfortable that you're not an expert in, right? Uh, versus keeping things a little too organized and too much of an agenda doesn't feel as interactive. So what are your what are your recommendations there on how something like that flows? Yeah, so I recommend you, first of all, have a theme for your wellness party that's aligned with what you focus on helping your clients with. So one of our clients, Brooke, she helps her clients with having more energy. So she called her party a rev up your energy cooking party. And then what I recommend after you have your theme is you pick maybe three recipes that, you know, are things like people love and maybe they're surprised that they love them. And they're not like sort of like your everyday foods that people eat, but you're introducing people to new things. Um, and so maybe like a breakfast item, a dinner item and a dessert. So you're kind of mixing up the types of recipes. And as you are showing people or having them or whatever way you're doing it, doing the preparation of these items, you're talking about some of the ingredients and why, how those particular ingredients are helpful to the theme that your party is focused on. So for Brooke, her party was focused on energy. So for example, if one of her recipes had, you know, dark leafy greens, she might be talking about what the benefits of why, you know, having dark leafy greens is really going to help you, or we're putting some really good um, fats in this smoothie for your breakfast, because that's really going to keep your energy stable. And so it really lends itself to doing some good teaching and again, showing yourself off as an expert. So it's not just, let's make some fun recipes and aren't they yummy? But it's on top of that is, and this is going to help you with this thing that you're wanting to improve. Mm -hmm. I think the interactive piece is interesting. And I was thinking as you were talking that, like I run this group program every couple, two, three times a year. And I have people who come back and redo it just to reconnect with the content. And it's sort of like when I get onto these Zoom sessions, it's just the Aaron talking head show, like blah, blah, blah. Here's everything that I can teach you. And I, I'm thinking maybe what I should do is say, hey, Sally, you know what? You've been, you've been rebooting a couple of times. Why don't you jump on, turn your camera on and why don't you tell these fine folks what you know about XYZ topic? And just like, I think there's something really empowering about getting your clients involved, but also um, when you as an expert have been able to teach it to somebody who can then teach it, yes. that sort of helps you to elevate your, your expertise. Plus the interactivity is fun. Um, when I you love were, that. Yeah. When you're talking about doing talks and online talks, I had two, um, two pushbacks that I anticipated people might think of. And one of them is I'm not an expert and I just feel like, mm -hmm. yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. Like, and here's sort of the rally cry. If, if you've gone to a health coaching school and gotten a certificate, something brought you there something brought you to that moment. It wasn't just a random career path you pulled out of a hat. You had some experience 
that brought you there and you are an expert in something, you've probably been talking your families and friends ears off about it for months or years. So talk about that. Just behave as if you are an expert in that space. And I think what trips people up is they're worried that they're going to come off fraudulent in comparison to more seasoned pros or coaches, but they're, they're not, that's not your audience. Like, don't worry about it. Right. That's not your audience. The other health coaches in the world are not your audience to speak to the people who are just like you, who you can help and, and, and harness the expertise, the, uh, the expertise of your experience. The second thing, and I'd love to get your opinion on this is, well, but nobody's watching. Like a new health coach doesn't really have an audience. So if, so at, if Bob, the health coach goes live on Instagram every day, nobody's watching. He says, what's the point? Yeah. So what is the point? Yeah. I love that. It's a great question. So I have a couple things to say about that. This is one reason why I love local talks and we'll talk about how we can do this online as well and with live streams. So when you're new and even when you're not new, you still want to be getting in front of, even when you're not new, even me, right? I mean, I don't do health coaching. I haven't done health coaching for 11 years, but I have a business. I still need to get in front of new people consistently or I won't have a business. Right. So I just want to say that. So, but if you're brand new and you don't have people to invite, right, that's normal. And we all start out, I always like to say, we all start out with zero people on our list. We all start out with zero people in our following. Like it, we're not born with that and it isn't anything we should have shame about. It is just a fact of how it is, right? <laughs> so, but if you can identify, and everyone can do this, you can identify some groups and some businesses that serve a similar audience as you. You know, whether that's yoga studios, gyms, acupuncturists, chiropractors, a juice bar, I mean, we could go women's groups, professional associations, mom's groups. Um, stores. That's another one. A lot of health food stores are always looking to bring in some sort of guest speaker to have yes. a, some sort of topic on a health related topic, especially Correct. if it's, oh, perhaps you're doing a little cooking class where you might be able to do a little, or not even cooking class through the health food store that actually sells food yeah. where you're explaining why so many of the products found on these shelves are better than at the local supermarket. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So when you give a talk at a group or at a venue um, and you set it up with them where they are, they're not just providing you a space, but you are giving a talk for their people and they're promoting the talk that gives you an audience, right? Now we can do the same thing. So I, I, oh, let me just add to that, that when I was a health coach, I had a lot of people offer me, oh, you can rent this community space that we have. And I would always ask, you know, and I, I recommend that you all do this. If you're lining up talks, I would say, do you promote, will you promote my talk? And if they won't, then it's a no for me. And I, and it has to be via email because if it's just via social media, I know I'm not going to get enough people there. Um, and then I will also ask, have you hosted other speakers before? And if so, what, what was the turnout? Because one of the, one of the most defeating things that you can do as a health coach or an entrepreneur of any kind is to be giving talks or use utilizing any marketing strategy where you are expending a lot of energy and you're getting very little return for that energy expenditure because then we get burnt out and we feel defeated and we just don't want to do it, right? So we want to set ourselves up to have, not every experience is going to be positive. And of course, there's going to be learnings that happen where we're like, oh, okay, giving talks at X type of place doesn't work very well for me. I'm not going to do that anymore. But giving talks at these types of places is really fruitful. So I'm going to do more of that. Um, so the other piece in terms of having an audience, you mentioned Aaron lives doing a live stream. 
So we have a strategy that we teach in the Abundant Health Coach, and it is, we call it the audience building formula. And it is where you, we teach you how to do what are called co-hosted live streams. So a co-hosted live stream is where you're doing a live stream with another business owner or practitioner of some kind, or even it could be a group. And you are getting in front of your audience and their audience all at the same time. So the way that I recommend doing this is, um, and this is just a great strategy to do consistently where you kind of have like on your marketing to-do list every every week or every month that you are reaching out to, you know, X number of people to do co-hosted live streams and with the goal of maybe you're going to do two a month. I mean, if you did two hosted, two co-hosted live streams a month, your list would grow exponentially and it would really change your business. So the, but it can feel a little intimidating, like how do I go about doing this and are people gonna wanna do this with me? And so um, the way to do this that works really magically is that you are inviting the, per, the business owner. So let's say I wanted to um, get in front of Laura's audience. I would email Laura and I would say, hey, Laura, I would love to have you come on and do a live stream. I've been, you know, watching what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I'd love to invite you on to do a live stream. And, you know, you can say like, I do this. This is my biweekly show. You can give it even a name, right? Like a podcast has a name. Um, you don't have to go that far, but you're inviting the other person to something with you. You are not asking for something, right? Now, once there are yes, then you want to kind of explain. And we have a we have like a a follow up email we give our clients that lays all of it out. Where it's like, here's what I'm asking of you. Here's what I'm gonna like. Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what you're gonna do. Here's our you know, our dates and our times, and I'll give you all the graphics and materials at this time. I'm making this sound complicated. It's really not, but it's basically a way to say, I'm asking that you share this via email to your people. I'm going to be sharing it via email to my people. This is all about getting exposure. You're giving them an email that they can send. You're giving them a graphic they can use to put in the email or on social media. and and then, you know, you're going live with this other person, you're having a, a conversation about a topic that relates to both of your audiences, you're both getting a chance to share your expertise, and both of your audiences are getting the opportunity to get to know the other person. And you're not doing this with competitors, you're doing this with people who serve a similar audience to you, but mm -hmm. offer something complimentary to you. So there's no like, oh, wait, am I sending my people over to this other person? I don't actually believe in that anyway, but I don't believe in that way of looking at things anyway, but. You know, there's a lot that I really lo love about this. First and foremost is it helps you build a larger network, um, which is super important if you're going to continue to grow. So building a network with collaborative professionals, especially this not only does it help almost double your audience or, or just, um, enlarge your audience, but you can do it at um, a relatively low cost on something like this. Um, it also um, continues to put you in the role of content expert. Yes. I used to do a lot of public speaking in my old job and the words I was using, the presentation I was giving was not mine. Somebody else wrote it. I was just the one up there delivering it, but I'm instantly in the role of content expert because I'm the one up there talking. So to kind of piggyback on what Erin was saying earlier, people thinking, but I'm not an expert. All you need to do is to be more knowledgeable than the audience in front of you. You don't have to be a flat out expert on something, which is why you want to stick to a topic you know well, that you feel passionate about, and that um, you have an opinion that you can defend. 
right? Yeah. The number of times I've actually been heckled or had pushback is very small, not heckled, but someone might ask a question or push back. Um, and I'm just, you're just able to frame, or I was just able to, to frame this point of view behind my talking point and how I arrived at either that conclusion. And, and you're right. A lot of this stuff around health and wellness is contested, oh, right? Yeah. There's, there's different opinions on both sides and each side can point to their own research study or whatever, you know? So it's sort of like, I can speak from my own sort of frame of reference and experience. And this is what I have found. And this is what my other clients have found, you know? So you, you got to kind of get that out of the way. But um, I love the idea of being able to leverage other collaborative professionals that speak to a similar audience um, and just continuing to not only increase your audience, but broaden your network of yes. other professionals that can provide referrals and vice versa. And it's fun. Yeah. It's actually, you know, the first couple of times we do anything, it, it, it takes more energy. We're more nervous, which takes more energy. Right. But then like, once we get a couple of times under our belts, these things become really fun. I mean, we're kind of all behind a computer on our own, like solo entrepreneurs doing our thing. And so I think that when we can partner up and do things with other people, um, and we can get in front of groups, we can, there's connection, right? And I think that if we can look at that as like a really joyful, soul filling thing, then, um, we'll show up and do it more. Right? Yeah. I mean, do you have a recommendation? So in terms of, I mean, so in-person talk is a little more obvious, right? You're, you're going to a brick and mortar business that has a physical location that you can give a talk to, but something online or live stream, do you have recommended platforms that you have found to be more user-friendly or uh, more shareable than others? Do you have preferences and, or recommend certain platforms? Well, for live streams, we're looking at Facebook or Instagram generally. Mm -hmm. I think that the trend is moving much more to Instagram, but a lot of the coaches that I work with are built in communities on Facebook just because they have a lot of friends and family and people that they're connected to on Facebook already. Um, so I say start with the platform that you're currently on and if if you're already on Instagram, don't worry about Facebook because Facebook is dying. Mm. If you're on Facebook, then stick with that for now with an eye to expand into Instagram. It's interesting you say that. What makes you say Facebook is dying? Well, <laughs> it's it's the number of people who are just moving off the platform, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also what I'm seeing in terms of my own Facebook group and my clients, um, you know, my Facebook group, I just watch the, the level of engagement and the number of people who, are, you know, with 11,000 people in my group and a post is only shown to 20 people. Yeah. That is just never going to work very well, right? right. Yeah. Plus Facebook yeah. is the actual worst. But the only thing about Facebook is that the community piece is so nicely compartmentalized. It's just hard to, I guess, hard-ish to build a community on Instagram. And, and one thing that I, I do like about Facebook is that you can co-stream from Zoom to Facebook. Yes. So you can have, you can have this, this live stream going into your Facebook group for your existing followers. And you can also share the link to anybody, your Instagram followers, your email list and say, Hey, I'm doing this talk. It'll be on Zoom. It'll be in my Facebook group. And you can kind of uh, kill two birds with one stone, but yes, I, I yeah, I wish there was some better community option, that's sort of like Facebook, but just less, less like Facebook. I think that so when you're if you're running a program like Erin, you mentioned a program that you run twice a year, and I don't know what you do with it, but I encourage my clients, and I do the same, where I have gr I have close I have private Facebook groups. Mm -hmm where I have my free one, the Health Coach Collective, and that's where anyone can join. Um, and then I have groups for my paid offerings where I, I'm in there daily providing support. And I think it still works quite well for that. But if we're talking about getting in front of new people, 
again, I think it does depend on it, a person who already is currently on Facebook and has a lot of their connections on Facebook. I say, use it, but use your personal page, not your business page, because unless you have a big list and you're driving your list to view something on your business page, because again, business page is similar to what I described with my group. Um, your posts or your content on your business page are getting shown to a very, very minuscule portion of the people who like and follow your page. Right. So it's very much pay to play where Facebook, you know, wants you to be running ads and that's for, you know, for new coaches is not something that I recommend doing. <laughs> now, Laura, you also asked about, um, platforms for doing online talks. Mm -hmm. I recommend Zoom. I recommend um, either Zoom meeting or Zoom webinar. Um, if Zoom webinar is like a higher priced option, I don't think it's super pricey, but with Zoom meeting, the difference is you see like everyone in their little like right. Brady Bunch kind of square. And in Zoom webinar, it's just the facilitators who are seen and you can be on camera, off camera. Both options are good. And I would say for someone who's new and starting out, Zoom meeting is just fine. And you can set the default that people's cameras are turned off. Um, so there isn't a lot of distraction and you can share your screen to share slides. Um, if that's something that that you want to do. But I yeah, I recommend Zoom. That's the best platform for giving an online talk. Um, but you do want to have people to invite to that online talk, whether right. that's your audience or you are lining up, you know, three local businesses who are aligned with what you do to promote your online talk. So a similar idea to giving a local talk at a brick and mortar location, but in this case, you're maybe having a yoga studio and a functional medicine doctor and a, the local juice bar, all three promoting your online talk at once. Okay, great stuff. So I think an online talk, you know, I, one of, one of the, my favorite tactics that you um, described was um, co-streaming or sharing the stream with somebody, a, a fellow peer. Cause I think even a brand new health coach has somebody in their peer group and, you know, that's just, that's just nice. That's, I think that's a nice place to start to just kind of build up some reps, get a little practice under your belt. So moving away from talks is that what's, is there another tactic that you encourage health coaches to try? Yeah. So the other two are going to be social media, which we've kind of dipped, dipped our toes in, in this conversation in terms of live streaming, there's obviously posting and there's, um, doing stories and reels and all that fun stuff. Um, and then partnering would be the third bucket. So these are the three buckets that I see newer coaches who are going for anywhere they're between zero and um, 50K a, a year and they're wanting to work or they're wanting to work their way up to 50K to maybe 75K. Like these are the strategies that are consistently working that are free strategies yeah. and they um, and partnering. You can see even in this conversation already how these strategies go hand in hand with each other. So partnering could just be straight up partnering, right? Where you're, you're meeting with, let's say a local acupuncturist and you have a relationship where you both send each other clients, patients when appropriate, right? There's no live streaming involved. There's no talks involved, right? It might just be a straight up getting referrals from this partner. But you can also, with a partner, do a live stream, do a co-hosted live stream, or give a talk at their space. Um, and so the strategies can work really well together. And in fact, doing co-hosted, if you have your eye on a potential partner you want to like work more deeply with, maybe you have a program you want them to promote. 
um, for you, like a, like a cleanse or a reboot or something like that, you can, as a first step, invite them to do a co-hosted live stream with you. And that's just like a really easy way to get in conversation with them, get in relationship with them, dip your toe in the water, have them. Um, and then you can, over time, build that relationship and, um, and do more with them. Very cool. So giving talks, partnering, we can see where that all works really well together, as well as how, you know, and bringing social media in. And so I, I want to dig a little deeper into that, if we can, because sure. it's an area that I know people that I've spoken to feel very insecure about. They either don't like social media and are trying to avoid it altogether. Do I really have to be on there? So I'd actually like your opinion there, but also the most effective strategies to use within social media without having to spend all day on it. Yeah. How are you recommending people use social media more effectively? Yeah. Great question. So I first just want to say like, social, you can get clients straight from social media and we have clients who do that. And also social media becomes like just part of your ecosystem where you've got, you're doing these things to get in front of new people. You're getting those new people on your list. Some of them are booking initial consults with you. Some of them are just hanging out on your list. You're emailing them ideally once a week with some piece of content or at, telling them about a live stream you're going to be doing. And you're inviting them to follow you on social media. And so they're, they're getting to see you. It's like, what do they say? People need to see something 10 times, you know? So like a company like Coca-Cola, I mean, it's a funny example to bring up in the health coaching industry, but you know, they know that they've got to have billboards and they've got to have TV ads. And they've got to have radio ads, right? And they've got to have magazines and all that stuff. So we also have an ecosystem right? And social media is part of that. And it's a way for us to not just get in front of strangers, but also a way for our people who have come into our orbit to get to know us better and to build that relationship and build that trust with them over time. So when it comes to, okay, do I have to do social media or not? It does not have to be the first thing that you do. I will say that. You know, if you're like, I, I just would find it easier to just start going out and giving talks, then absolutely 100% do that. That is actually going to get you clients or the wellness parties, right? That is going to get you clients very quickly, like within a month, you know, if you go out today and you book a talk for a month from now the week of the talk, you're probably going to have a couple new clients if you do it right, you know? Um, and so, but I would say social media is something that coaches are going to want to do. It just doesn't have to be the first thing that they do. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you asked um, what, how to kind of make it easier so that you're not spending all day on social media. Right. So one thing I really recommend is having a theme for the week. And I'm a big fan of doing live streams. So if you do a one live stream a week and you think of your live stream as your kind of anchor theme for the week, you can then repurpose pieces of that live stream for your other pieces of content for that week. So let's take a topic. Let's say that you were doing a live stream on, um, let me think of one. If you all think of one, <laughs> bounce it out there. Um, Let's say it's like, uh, I'll, I'll use, okay, let's do, let's do a menopause example. Let's do um, how, a live stream on how to reduce hot flashes. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're doing your live stream. It's like top ways to reduce hot flashes without, you know, going on hormones or something, right? You can then have a, let's say you cover five strategies during that live stream. You could then, there's multiple ways to do this, right? You could take each of those strategies and make them an individual post. You could, if you're do, working on Instagram, you could do a carousel post that's like showing the five strategies. You can um, take one of the strategies and tease it out and do a reel where you're showing them like, make a smoothie with these three ingredients that reduce hot flashes, right? So you can make it really fun and playful. And, um, and I recommend batching your content. So this is another way to make it easy, which is having one day or maybe two, two chunks, like a part of a Monday, part of a Tuesday, or whatever days work for you, where this is when you're working on your content for the, for the following week. I like to do it a week ahead. That way you don't have to. And I like the beginning of the week because otherwise it's hanging over our heads. The whole week we're thinking, I still have to do that, right? So um, it feels so good. once you, When you've got your content done for the next week, boy, does that feel good, yeah. right? So that means like you're sitting down and you're just outlining your live stream. What are the main points you want to make? And you're doing your graphics and writing up your posts and getting them scheduled. Um, another thing that can be really helpful just from a very practical standpoint standpoint is um, I think most people are familiar with a tool called Canva, mm -hmm. C-A-N-V-A, canva.com. I mean, it's unbelievable that this exists. I mean, five years ago, <laughs> it's a totally different world. How, it makes it super easy to create graphics that look really nice. And what you can do is set yourself up with like, um, a, like a, maybe 10 templates that all have your colors and the same fonts. And just every time you go to create social media posts, you're working from the same template. So you're not having to reinvent the wheel every time and go, oh, well, let me scroll through the thousands of options that Canva offers, <laughs> right? Um, that makes it really easy. Yeah. Okay. Fast. I'm excited about this. So I'm staunch advocate for repurposing. Actually, just to go back to a previous example I shared, that's one of the reasons why I've been enjoying using Zoom and streaming it to my Facebook page because I'm recording the Zoom. And then I have that video file where I can pull snippets from, not, not that I do, but if I had, if I had time, I would. Yes. But, but when you mentioned the, um, the act of batching your content, I always love that suggestion. Every time a marketing expert says it, it's like, yes, that's a great idea. And this is where I'll put a plug in for Facebook's business suite, their, their business app. You can schedule posts to go to Facebook and Instagram. You can schedule them in advance. And that's not even a paid service. That's just like built into a Facebook business page, which is really cool. But I used to do it on Sundays. That was, and I used to make it a whole ritual. I would go to a coffee shop. I would treat myself to a latte. I'd be listening to some binaural beats and I'd be writing. And I, I it was such a lovely day. I'd have it all. And I, I don't do it anymore, but you've just um, jogged for me that I should. And the other thing I wanted to mention on the Canva tip, first of all, I'm a big fan of the pro account. I think it's worth the investment yes. to upgrade to pro. And did you know this? You probably did, but I only just recently learned this. You can buy templates from designers on Etsy. Oh, so you like, you can, you can search Etsy for like a vibe that kind of matches what your brand identity is. And they have Canva templates Yes, you can buy for like 20 bucks. It's awesome. Yes. And there's another company, although I fully support Etsy. So it's good. I can't remember the name of the company. There's another company that has loads of templates and you can just pick, oh, I want this. I like this set. And it's like hundreds in each yeah. one and you load them into your Canva account. And then it also gives you ideas. Yes. The actual graphics can give you ideas for okay. posts yeah. because you'll see like one that's like, a little you know, quote card or something. Yeah. Quote card or a, you know, uh, a or B, you know, like a poll mm -hmm. or a, um, 
this or that? Are you this or that? Mm -hmm. um, so like these options then can jog your thoughts of like, okay, well, I'm talking about tips for reducing hot flashes. Um, what are some things I can do in a this or that? Or what are some things I could do in a poll if I want to have a post that's a poll on this topic of reducing hot flashes? Yeah. And so I love that. Where I thought that, where I think the template thing, the Etsy template thing and, and is really useful is in starting brand new mm -hmm. because you would want your feed to have some stuff in it. You know, like you can just kind of go in and dump like 20 posts that, that are, were inspired by these templates. And then there's something to scroll through and somebody comes along. I, I think that's um, a useful idea. People who are yes. like, I don't know what to write about. It's like, well, yeah. you know, fake it till you make it in a manner of speaking. Yes. Cool. Fantastic. I love that. So talks, social media. Um, okay, so tell me, so in, in terms of just using, for example, Instagram, there's regular posts, there are stories, there's reels. I mean, are you an advocate of any particular tool within Instagram, let's say, if you think that's really the way things are trending that seem to get the most engagement? Um, I, I mean, I still have not really attempted any kind of real... I don't even know how that works. It's something that I would have to kind of really get my arms around, but clearly it gets engagement or I wouldn't yes. see so many people doing it. So yes. that's why I'm asking this question. Like, you know, no, I mean, it's a good question yeah, on Instagram. I just kind of scroll through my feed. I'm not even, I don't even really go through stories all that often, but that's just how I use it. But clearly I'm strange because everybody else <laughs> seems to get hung up on the stories and the reels. So Everyone's different. Everyone's different. Yeah. And I would say if you are, so I'm a big fan of like layering on, like we talked about, like start with the strategy that you feel most aligned with. Right. But in terms of social me media itself, I would say to start with just posting because that's the easiest mm -hmm. and it's going to get stuff in your feed. Like Aaron was talking about. Um, only post if you have something to say. I mean, ideally you're planning out your content Four posts a week is like a good or three. If you're doing some other things is a good rule of, of thumb. Um, and then I would say to layer on doing reels, start with just doing one reel a week. And I will tell you that, um, it can be really fun recording reels and like, I would just like try to get, and I'm not like these things don't come naturally to me and I'm not a ham, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not who I am. Um, but I also was like, I'm not going to be that person who's just pointing, pointing, pointing at words on the screen. I mean, that's already I think gotten old. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would just be like, what's the topic? Okay. What's the thing fun I could do? Like I've pulled out like my daughter's like play cash register machine, you know, and I've done stuff with food and having props just can make it really fun. Um, so I would, that's what I would do second. And the reason I would do that one second as a layering on strategy is because they're getting so much more engagement. I mean, you'll see that in your feed, how many um, views, likes, comments, et cetera, you're gonna get a lot more with reels. Um, and then I would do either, well, I, I, I've already, you know, really been talking a lot about live streaming. Mm -hmm. So I would live stream and then share your live stream to when, so when you do a live stream on Instagram, it's a little bit different than Facebook. You do it on Instagram. If you're doing it on Instagram, when you are done, you have the option to save the video to IG video. Mm -hmm. it used to be called IGTV. It is right. now called IG video. You want to do that because otherwise it disappears. Mm -hmm. It will only stay in your feed while you are live. But if you, when you are done, literally on your screen, I'm like holding up my hand as if our <laughs> listeners can hear this. But you will end the live and you'll be presented with options. And one of the options is save to IG video. And you want to click that mm -hmm. and save it, or you can download it and then you can do lots of stuff with it, right? Like, um, 
you can download it and then upload it. So um, that I highly, highly recommend as well is um, saving those, those videos. You can then, if you're on Facebook, you can put it on Facebook or vice versa. You can do it on Facebook and download it and upload it to your IG video. <laughs> um, and then I would add on stories because stories really invite engagement. Like they are designed for engagement. Um, you have to use the engagement features, right? Like you have to add that to your stories, which I highly recommend where you're asking a question, you have a poll of some kind. Um, that opens the door, like that goes directly to your DMs and it really just opens the door for a direct line of communication with your mm -hmm. audience. And um, not, I don't ever recommend anything salesy or yucky, but if the conversation lends itself, there often can be an opening to like, let's hop on a call at some point in the communication, right? Um, it also like if you're promoting a, a group program, like a cleanse, and you're promoting that and you're doing stories about it and people are engaging with your stories and they're getting into your DMs that invites people to like really ask their questions because mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't sign up for a program because they've got some sort of concern. They haven't, they haven't asked you about it, but if you can get into communication with them, then they're much more likely to actually express what their potential concern might be. And yeah. once they do, then you can actually address the concern. Whereas if they're just sitting in their house, not, a, not telling you what their concerns are, you have no way of like saying like, no, you're not going to go hungry on this cleanse. Oh, there's lots of food options. Oh, you're, no, that you're not going to have to buy lots of supplements or whatever people's concerns and fears are. I think one um, thing that was interesting that I picked up years and years ago was don't ever forget that social media is social. Right. It's not meant to be just shouting into the void, your opinions on things. Like we do need to get this exchange going back and forth. Now, a lot of folks um, preoccupy themselves with the algorithm or whatever. The thing's always going to change. You were talking about reels. I put one really stupid, boring reel. I, I can't get into them. I just can't yeah, I refuse to wiggle around lip syncing, but like my, my account reach went up at like 800% that week. It's like, <laughs> Wow. Anyway, but, but the point is social media is social. We need to create opportunities for conversation. So I think if we go into social media with that in mind, rather than worrying about how many followers we have or who's got the coolest TikToks, that really just helps to like clear the decks a little bit. Yes. And if we go back to something we talked about earlier on, it is a platform for us to share our passion. Mm -hmm. is a platform for us to express our thoughts, share our knowledge, give people a different way of thinking about things, a different solution or path for their health and their wellness. And I think there tends to be, particularly with in the health, again, like the healers, helpers that health coaches are, there tends to be a bit of a like hate relationship with social media. But I want you to think for a minute about what if social media didn't exist, particularly during the pandemic, you know, what if it didn't exist? Yeah, even in the pandemic, a billboard wouldn't have helped you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So social media is this platform and I get the, it's very, it's controversial and I get, I have my, I have concerns about social media and how it's affecting our, our mm -hmm. societies. But if we're just talking about growing our little health coaching businesses, right? It's a platform that allows you to connect with people you would otherwise not be able to connect with and get clients mm -hmm. and share, share your, your um, thoughts and expertise. Yeah, that's great. Um, I wanted, I want people to have an opportunity to hear about how you actually work with people in, in doing this. And so you said you're doing predominantly groups now. Is, is that correct? Like, how do you work with health yeah. coaches to teach them, you know, this process and, and about marketing themselves? Yeah. So we have, um, 
three core offerings. One is the called the Abundant Health Coach, which is a 12 week program where we teach you essentially it boils down to how to get clients. We're going through everything from who are you serving? What are your programs, your pricing, your messaging? How do you, how do you get in front of, like we're diving deep into all the areas we talked about today in terms of how do you give talks? How do you do the co-hosted live streams? How do you um, use social media? Um, we dive into selling. How do you lead initial consults with potential clients? How do you handle objections? How do you do this in a way that feels really good for you and for your potential client? Um, we cover list building and we give, in all my offerings, I'm really big on giving templates. Mm. Um, so if I can make it much easier and quicker for for our clients to get into action, that's what I want. So it's filled with my treasure box of done for you templates for everything that we teach. So that's one of our offerings. And then we have our ready to launch cleanse program. And I'm a big proponent of offering what I call health jumpstart programs, which are these short programs like a cleanse where they're anywhere from like seven to 21 days. They're a low cost. They are a low time investment because they're an easy yes for people. It's something that people can jump into without a ton of commitment. And then they'll experience some wins. They'll get to know you and trust you. And they are just a fantastic feeder into one-on-one -on -one coaching. So we have that. So it gives everything that you need to lead a cleanse. You can rename it to anything you want. Um, plus all the marketing materials that you need. And then we have our done for you wellness talks. So that's also soup to nuts of everything you need to three particular topics um, with the slides and the scripts, but also all of the, how do you get booked for talks and how, do, where should you be giving talks and how do you market the talks and how do you follow up after the talk? It's sort of a whole system. Awesome. You no, know, it's funny. We've, um, for years in our school, been adamant that like, nope, you got to write it yourself. Nope, you got to do it yourself. This is part of the process. This is part of learning. This is part of your growth. And then we wonder why people drag their feet on getting started because we're kind of forcing them into this area that they feel super insecure. And because of that, they just never get started. So we've kind of gotten on board, hey, Erin, about kind of putting together some done for you materials to just get people out there over time. Folks will take what we gave them and make it their own. Yeah. Or they'll start from scratch and build their own as they build confidence. But, but I do think leaning into some of these templates that are done for you that allows for some sort of custom um, changes here and there are a great way to just get out there and get started. So Absolutely. I think there's a lot of value there in a lot of what you're offering. So, you know, where can people find you to learn more about some of these programs that you offer? Yeah. Um, so I have a 30 day action plan for health coaches on how to get five clients in 30 days. And because so many coaches would say to me, can you just tell me what to do? Right. Just give me a plan. And so that's what I did. I put together a plan and it literally day by day, very doable. Here's what to do. And it, and it builds. Um, it's like all kind of flows together. And so you can get that at healthcoachactionplan.com. We've got some templates in there too, because I can never resist on giving some templates. <laughs> And, um, and then we've got our Facebook group, which is the Health Coach Collective. You can join me over there. And then my website, which is marketingforhealthcoaches.com. Amazing. You know what I love about um, the name of all these things is you know exactly what you're getting. There's no <laughs> It's very straightforward. Yeah, they're all about being this like mystical, really cool, like, hey, you know, this is a play on word. Just say what it is. <laughs> Just yeah. tell people what you do. And then I'd be like, oh, that's exactly what I need. <laughs> so I, I love that. Healthcoachactionplan.com. Health Coaching Collective. I mean, perfect. So I had a mentor who once said clear over clever. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. This was so fun. We've learned a lot. And, and you know what? This was very actionable. I think people can take away some things that they can try literally today. 
uh, to get themselves out there. So thank you. Well, I have loved every minute. I've loved talking with both of you and thank you for having me. You got it. This podcast was brought to you by Primal Health Coach Institute. To learn more about how to become a successful health coach, get in touch with us by visiting primalhealthcoach.com forward slash call. Or if you're already a successful health coach, practitioner, influencer, or thought leader with a thriving business and an interesting story, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us at hello at primalhealthcoach.com and let us know why we need to interview you for Health Coach Radio. Thanks for listening.